Wonder if you're at risk for the BRCA mutation known as the breast cancer gene? We will teach you all about it. A true cutting edge advance in medicine is our ability to test for the BRCA mutation, which is a broken gene that can run in your family and can dramatically increase your lifetime risk of developing breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and other types of cancer. If you've recently been diagnosed with breast cancer or have a strong family history of cancer, the time is now to engage your breast specialist to counsel you and see if you qualify for genetic testing. In this lesson, I'm gonna tell you what the BRCA mutation is and the specific cancer risks associated with it. I'm gonna tell you who qualifies for BRCA genetic testing and why we think you should ask for a multi-cancer gene panel of other cancer-causing genes when you get your breast cancer gene testing. I'm gonna tell you why you should consider BRCA testing upfront early in your diagnosis before breast cancer surgery. And I'm also gonna review some of the downsides of genetic testing and why some choose not to pursue it. So let's get started. So what is the BRCA mutation? Well, there's a reason they call it the breast cancer gene. BR for breast, CA for cancer. And everybody has the BRCA gene. Our body is composed of genes, tens of thousands of them. But if you inherit from your mother or your father, and men and women carry this broken copy of the gene equally. But if you inherit a broken copy of the BRCA gene, therefore a BRCA mutation, you carry a dramatically increased risk of developing breast cancer, 60 to 80% lifetime risk. Ovarian cancer, 20 to 40% lifetime risk, and a lifetime increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer if you're a man, and melanoma. So, if you are tested and are positive for the BRCA mutation, then your children carry a 50-50 chance of having that gene. Your brothers and sisters have a 50-50 chance of having the BRCA mutation and throughout your family, and this broken gene could be running through your family for hundreds or even thousands of years. The BRCA mutation really came on the popular media when Angelina Jolie announced that she had removed her breast, had bilateral mastectomies, to lessen her risk of developing breast cancer because she was BRCA mutation positive. Her family had a very strong family history of ovarian cancer and she underwent testing and was positive. And that's one option, but now this is commonplace information. Of all women diagnosed with breast cancer, the vast majority of these women do not carry this mutation or another mutation like it. In fact, only 10 to 15% of all breast cancers are felt to be caused by the BRCA mutation or other breast cancer causing mutations. So it is so important to engage your breast specialist at diagnosis about genetic testing, specifically the BRCA mutation, because unfortunately this is left off the table in your treatment and counseling early on. And if you carry the mutation and get testing before surgery, it might change your surgical decisions and we'll cover that soon. So who qualifies for BRCA testing? Well, a different way to describe this is who has enough risk factors to meet the guidelines to warrant testing and have insurance pay for the genetic testing. And the larger guidelines for testing are national guidelines. And you can find the main guideline in this lesson at the Breast Cancer School for Patients. It's under NCCN testing guidelines. But Genetic testing is quite complicated, and that's why you need counseling to put together all these pieces, see if you qualify, and then see if you're interested in pursuing testing. But I'll give you a list of some of the more common qualifying features. So, if you're diagnosed with breast cancer before or at the age of 50, you likely qualify. If you've had ovarian cancer at any age, 
if you have a close family member that carries the BRCA mutation, you also qualify for testing. If you have a strong family history of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, you may qualify. If you've had breast cancer in both breasts at different times or together, you likely qualify. If you have breast cancer and you're a man, you certainly qualify. It's a really big red flag. Or especially if you have a man that had breast cancer in your family, that's a strong risk factor. If you've had triple negative breast cancer, a type of breast cancer, and you were diagnosed before the age of 60, that's a risk factor. And if you are of Ashkenazi Jewish heritage and have had a family history of breast cancer at any age, you likely qualify. All of this information is put together by your breast cancer specialist or a certified genetic counselor to see if you qualify to review the advantages and downsides of genetic testing and to see whether you wish to pursue the testing. And I'll cover that next. What are the advantages of having BRCA testing? Well, if you are BRCA positive, whether or not you have breast cancer or not, you are a dramatically increased risk of developing breast cancer and ovarian cancer if you're a woman. And that's what I'm gonna cover here. So let's say you were found to have the BRCA mutation. Let's take breast cancer first. Well, if you know that you're a dramatically increased risk, there are a few things we can do to either one, screen you better. In addition to mammograms, we can add screening MRIs and follow you more closely. We can start screening at an earlier age, in your 20s or 30s. And then if you do develop a breast cancer, we will likely catch it sooner, smaller, and when it's a less of a threat to you. Some women, on the other hand, choose to reduce that increased risk of breast cancer by removing both breasts. And a mastectomy on both sides removes about 90% of all the breast tissue. So it dramatically decreases the lifetime risk of developing a breast cancer in your lifetime, or if you've had breast cancer, a new breast cancer in your lifetime. And that's why we tell you to engage your breast surgeon early on at diagnosis because if you have all these red flags for the BRCA mutation, you walk into your doctor's office, you're 35 years old, you have a family history of breast cancer, you might want gene testing up front. It takes a couple of weeks to get the results. Because if you carry that gene and you're going to have surgery for a breast cancer, there's a rationale to consider removing both breasts to lessen your risk of developing a new breast cancer because you're at a super high risk for developing one. It's not mandatory. But information is power, and you want that information to make the best decisions. Let's talk about ovarian cancer. If you carry the BRCA mutation, you have a 40, almost 40% 40 risk of developing ovarian cancer in your lifetime, and that's a deadly one. It's hard for us to pick it up early and catch it. So, the general recommendations are to remove the ovaries. You don't have to remove the uterus, but just the ovaries at the age of 35 or 40, especially when you're done having children. So if you're sure you're gonna be done having children at the age of 30, you can do it then or put it off a little bit later. But there's not another way to really manage the ovaries really well. I'm next gonna tell you about some of the downsides and why people choose not to do genetic testing. And then I'm gonna tell you why. If you're gonna have genetic testing, you must ask for a multi-cancer gene panel testing of a bunch of other cancer genes that can cause breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and a lot of other types of cancer. So what are the downsides of getting BRCA genetic testing? Well, getting genetic testing and finding out whether you are positive for the gene. So remember, 90 plus percent of people that undergo testing are negative. But if you do carry the gene, in some ways it opens up a Pandora's box of unanswerable questions. I carry the gene. Will I get breast cancer or not? Well, we say you have a 60 to 80 percent lifetime risk of developing breast cancer. Well, am I going to get it? Am I not? Do I want to do surgery? Do I not? Do I want to add MRIs to my breast screening? Do I not? These are difficult decisions and some very much struggle with pinning down exactly what they want to do and making decisions and some really agonize and worry, and it can add to a level of stress 
and difficulty making decisions going forward. And that's painful for some. And that's a really good reason not to do genetic testing. So it's a personal decision. It's not mandatory. Another downside of genetic testing is that if you are positive for the gene and you then make decisions to make, to have mastectomies on both sides or remove your ovaries, you might, having gone through those surgeries and had maybe complications or been unhappy with the surgery or the cosmetic outcome or the hot flashes with removing your ovaries, in some ways you can regret the decision not knowing what's ahead with surgery and the consequences and doing other things. So in some ways we can describe it as a very simple decision, do genetic testing. But it is complicated, and this is why you want to engage your breast cancer specialist or a certified genetic counselor and have an honest discussion about who you are, what your risks are, whether or not you want testing, and what would you do or what information would you do if you have the gene or do not have the gene. So why ask for multi-gene panel genetic testing with my BRCA genetic testing? For many, many years, we only tested for the BRCA mutation, the BRCA1 and 2 mutation. But over time, we are now able to identify many more genes that cause cancer. And it's very easy to run those genetic tests when we run your BRCA mutation test. So let me explain. Now, especially over the last two or three years, companies now roll in a battery of additional cancer-causing genes, let's say 25 other cancer-causing genes, that also can identify you as being an increased risk for breast cancer from a different type of gene, not the BRCA mutation, but genes that can identify you at a high risk for colon cancer, rectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, stomach cancer, and other cancers. And what's really neat about this is that if you're gonna get the BRCA mutation testing, insurance pays for this larger panel of tests along with paying for the BRCA mutation. So it adds no cost to you. So, do you want this information or do you not want this information? And it's interesting that some genetic counselors and breast specialists, if you have breast cancer, only wanna test you for breast cancer causing genes and they want to not test you for, when it's free, colon cancer causing genes and pancreatic causing cancer genes and others. Well, I disagree with that philosophy because at the Breast Cancer School for Patients, we're all about empowering you with information. Now, sometimes it complicates things and that's what they're trying to avoid, a complicated situation. But more information is power. You do not want later to realize you missed out on something earlier. And that's why we recommend multi-gene panel testing along with BRCA mutation testing. Testing for the BRCA mutation and other cancer-causing genes is now commonplace. But in reality, we are identifying and offering genetic testing to a tiny fraction of the women and men who are equally at risk who qualify for genetic testing. And it's possible that maybe you're one of them. So if some of the information presented here applies to you, then engage your physicians. After all, if you are found to be at risk, undergo genetic counseling and testing and prove to be positive and carry a cancer-causing gene, you can do things to lessen your risk of developing cancer, possibly save your life, and share with your family a gift of information that they too are at risk for cancer-causing mutations. To learn more about BRCA genetic testing, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we actually teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.